What are your dreams? What are your wants? Do you want to grow your business? Help you crush your goals personally, professionally, and financially. Just join the conversation. What's up? What's up? What's up? IG World, YouTube, Facebook Live. What's happening, guys? Hope you're all having an amazing Tuesday, man. Welcome to the call. Everyone on the call, the newcomers, everyone that's been here loyal to me. What's up? I'm kind of fired up. Just got off a podcast. It was great, man. Got an interview on a podcast. It was absolutely amazing. So it's funny to me how we're talking about today about belief system. But like I said, these calls, these calls, everything. First of all, everyone, a little wave. If you can, just say, what's up, man? I miss y'all. I can't. Wish I could see all your faces. I know Lake's busy. What's up, Malik? Malik's on the call. Muriel's on the call. Mohit, Linda, everyone's on the call. What's happening, crew? But look at these calls are meant to define. Define the game you want to play. My intention is any way, shape, or form to show you how I'm doing what I do. I continue to do every single day to try to accomplish this thing we call life. Like, how do we win the game of life? What do you got to do? What's your mindset? What does it got to be? How does this going to apply to you? This applies whether you're a, a young entrepreneur, whether you're a young dentist who's trying to figure it out, whether you're a dentist that's been practicing for 20 years, whether you're a mom, whether you're a, a medical worker. These calls are all designed to help you to become the best version of yourself. And my hope through the whole thing, my genuine hope through the whole thing is that you just take some of the things that I'm doing every single day and you start implementing them in your life. For some of you that don't know me, for some of the newcomers on the call, I'm Dr. Bobby Grassi, born and raised in Flint, Michigan, by a beautiful mother named Linda, who made a whopping $18,000 a year. Um, I can remember riding a big wheel growing up, thinking I was meant for something different. You're going to say, how do you have so much energy? Man, I have so much energy because we get to live this thing called life. And it was, I can remember the struggles. I remember what it was like not to have anything. I can remember going through dental school and not even sleeping, but two hours a day. I can remember putting myself through school. I remember all the struggles and all the trials and tribulations. I just did a thing today called calluses. And I did, I talked about calluses, but I want you to understand that I know we're going to talk about something different, but calluses, what is the point of a callus? A callus is designed to make you stronger. So anything you're going through in life right now, any single thing that you might feel as a chapter that's a negative chapter, understand that it's a blister right now, but eventually you're going to form that callus. You're going to form that callus to become the best version of yourself, and the things that used to cause you pain won't cause pain anymore. How do I know that, Shane? How do I know that, Andreas? How do I know that, Malik? Because you're, I'm a guy that lives by example, and I've gone through the experiences that maybe all of you have gone through. So that's what these calls are about. These calls are designed to just give you the tips and tricks to be the best you. Thumbs up if you want to be the best you. I know I do. Thumbs up, right? So our last conversation that we talked about empowering beliefs of the wealthy. Like what do they have? Wealthy individuals possess this unique empowering belief system that serves them as the powerful foundation for their success, right? They recognize money as a useful tool to fulfill their ambitions rather than something to be extravagant and squandered, right? Furthermore, they are not fearful. They take risk. When the situation calls for it, even if these gambles may result in failure, at the end of the day, you got to take risks. So that's a wealthy mindset. But this week, we're talking about something that is so true to everybody on this call, because we all have it. We all have it. It's called the limiting belief system. And we actually have some of the limiting belief systems of what the poor is. And so to me, you're going to say, how did you get out of where you were? How did you not become a statistic of your dad who is a, an alcoholic? How did you do the things you did? Look, at it. it was really simple. I changed my belief system. Everything that I got told, love my mom, I love everyone on it. Everything I got told about society, I did the polar opposite. It worked out. So whatever belief system you have and how do you believe in it? Like, how did you come up to that, right? Belief is it's a highly personal notion. Formed from internal values and awful life, life experiences. It's formed from your family. It's formed from, from the people you hang around with. It's formed from your society. It's formed from the media. It's, it's a belief system. And it's hard and it's ingrained in us. And it's in every single person has their own unique set of beliefs. They have their form for basis of how they interpret the world. And that's why I love when people try to say, you got to interpret it this way. No, no. How you interpret the world is how you interpret it. Whether it's religious, whether it's philosophical, it does not matter. It's between you. It's your belief system. And it's important to, at the end of the day, though, to maintain an open mind so as not to become overly attached to any particular belief system. At the same time, you're evaluating your own beliefs. And you're going to get new information that comes all over time. See, the problem is, is we get so stuck as a society that it's only one way. It's not true. Skyler, it's not true. Christine, it's not true. Mohit, it's not true. It is not true that one belief system is right. It's not true. If that was the case, there would only be one religion. There's different beliefs. 
but it's 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 how you it's your limiting belief system that either going to set you up for success or failure. Your limiting beliefs play such a significant role in keeping you either in the state of wealth or poverty. Most people keep them in the state of poverty, and they and the, the and these beliefs are so often deeply ingrained. It can hold a perfect like it's hold me back before. It's it's it, it holds you back to your full potential. You believe you can't do something because my family didn't do something. Malik, you might not believe you couldn't do something because this person didn't do something. Well, why not be the first? Be the first Elon Musk of your family. Be the first. Ready? I was the first doctor in my family. Plant a new seed, man. Anything is possible. There's not a person in this world that can't accomplish whatever they set their mind to accomplish. They got to believe they can. It all starts with belief. It all starts with limiting your limiting belief system. I never thought in a million years, look, at the end of the day, I said, I hope I can make $100,000, man. Now you make $100,000, like, how do you do more? And you challenge yourself. But really what holds people back is the negative self-talk. It's always the negative self-talk. My own, my own child going through it in sports, you know, when you lose confidence, we hear this all the time, just with the thumbs up. Isn't it hard to get up every single morning? Isn't it hard to look at something positive in this world when you're negative? Isn't it hard, JD? Isn't it hard, JD, when you're on the call, when you think negative self-talk in your head? Isn't it hard to get yourself up every single day to be the best you because you just don't want to move? Because all you're doing is sabotaging your life. It's so funny. If I told everybody right now, tell me the 10 people you love the most. Tell me the 10 people you love the most. I'm going to ask you this one question. How long would it take for you to say you? How long would it say, take to say you? You would never even mention yourself because you don't view yourself worthy in love. That's where negative self-talk comes in. Man, you should love yourself more than anybody loves yourself, more than God. I mean, God loves you, right? But you should love yourself before anybody else. Why do I say that? You should say positive about yourself before anybody else. Why? Because the only thing that matters at the end of the day is how you view yourself, what you tell yourself, how you get out of bed every single day. You might say, why do you have so much fire? Why are you doing these calls? I'm doing these calls. Be the best me be the best man, to be the best husband, to be the best father, because I challenge myself every day to get out of my own limiting belief system, to show you that anything is freaking possible in this world. I got to show up for the JDs. I got to show up for the Malik's. I got to show up for the Linda's. I got to show up for my three kids. I got to show up for you on these calls every single day. Why? Because it forces me to be the best version of myself. And if you tell yourself you're not good enough, you're always going to be right. You are the fruit of your words, as the Bible states. You are the fruit of your words. You're the fruit of your self-talk. Thumbs up if you understand that. Thumbs up if you can see the energy coming from my freaking soul right now. Why? Because I hate negative self-talk. I do it every single day, and I sabotage my own life, and I don't want you to do it. So I'm very passionate about that. We talk about baseball. If anybody that doesn't know me, I love baseball. They say, what made you a great pitcher? What made you the best you? Man, I believe when I got on that field, I was in total control. Five foot 11, little Paisan, little Italian. Like five foot 11, dude with 135 pounds when I graduated high school, but I'd get everybody out. And it had nothing to do with me being cocky or arrogant as I refused to give them the power over me. I refused to let myself be so afraid of failure that I didn't even try. And most people won't even take steps necessary to even improve their financial self or their personal self just because of a fear of failure. That's the next thing that holds people back is the fear of failure. If you're afraid to take risk or try new things, you're less likely to even pursue opportunities that could lead to greater financial stability or even happiness. Guys, I'm one of my fears in life is, 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 is a fear of failure. Right? I don't want to let my family down. I don't want to let you down, Malik. I don't want to let you down, Linda. I don't want to let you down, Mohit. I don't want to let you down, Mario. I don't want to let Andreas down. I don't want to let Christine down. I don't want to let my team down. I, I'm afraid to fail. Skylar, I don't want to let anybody down. So I got to show up every single day. And you know what you got to do when you, you know what failure is? Failure is when you stop moving, you don't try. That's failure. But you can also say something different. See, a belief system says you're feeling failure. My belief system now says, I'm willing to learn from that mistake. It's how you perceive everything. And then another limiting belief system, right? They believe, everyone believes money is bad. If you have negative talks about money, if you have negative talks about yourself, if you have negative talks about everything, you inertly believe something is evil, then you may unconsciously sabotage your own efforts to even earn more money, even save money. I've heard it all the time. Oh, that, you know, he's not nice. He has money. What do you mean? If you're a jerk before you have money, you're a jerk with money. If you're a great human being before you have money, you're great when you when you have money. It has nothing to do with the money. Money's not the evil. Your mindset's what's evil. It's what you do with that money. 
God never says, if I'm the king of the kings and the Lord of lords, I'm the head, not the tail. Why should I not have money? Why should I not have money to bless the world? Shoot, even churches should want money to support a business. Don't ever think money is evil. It's evil if you do something bad with money. It's evil, Connor, if you do something bad with money. You're evil if you treat people wrong. That's when you're evil. It's not money. Your belief is also limited to your circumstances. If you believe that your poverty is a result of external factors that cannot, can, you cannot control, such as upbringing or social inequality, you may not see the opportunities to change and improvement. I can tell you right now, dude, that none of that is true. Destiny is not hereditary. Yes, I did the title of my book. Your destiny has nothing to do with your social economic status. It has nothing to do with who you are as a person. It has nothing to do with it. It's all about your belief system. The, the media and everyone in this world wants you to believe a certain way. It's just not true. Nobody in this world in America is truly suppressed. They're not. It's their belief system. We all have the ability to do whatever we can get to. We all have the ability to accomplish great things in life. We all have opportunities better than any country in this world. It's, it's a belief system. You're not, you're not a product of your circumstances. You're not. You, you have the ability every single day. It's the decisions you make and the choices you make. And to overcome these living beliefs, you got to move towards greater financial stability. You got to move towards greater things. You got to become better in, in the world and you got to challenge your own belief systems. You have to. This may involve seeking new people, new support systems, new experiences, new opportunities, learning how to build self confidence through positive self talk, reframing your belief systems of money and success. Whatever it is, you got to create a way to be the best version of yourself. You got to change what you're doing. Tony Robbins once said if you want something different, you got to do something different. What a concept. You know, you see people suffering from anxiety and depression and can't get out of their way and they believe they can't. A lot of it's because they just don't move. Sometimes you just got to take a step. Take a step to challenge your own belief systems. I promise you, people on the call, if you'd have known me in high school versus now, I would have never believed it was possible. It wasn't until I started saying, I am the voice, I lead, not follow, believe, not doubt, create, not destroy, I'm a force for good, I defy the odds, I set new standards, and I step up, that my life changed. Because I reprogrammed what should be happening to me. I do believe that I'm a likeness of God. I do believe I'm the image of God. So if I'm the image of God and I'm the likeness of God, why wouldn't I be the best me? That's not a cockiness. That's not an arrogance. It's a belief system. You all are too. What's holding you back, Malik? Shane, what's holding you back? What's holding you back? You need to start my day earlier. <laughs> you maybe, Malik, maybe you do. You're trying to get some sleep, but you know what I'll tell you, Malik, on that note? Starting your day earlier, this is what I'll tell you. It don't matter when you start, brother. It's how you finish. Who cares when you start your day? What are you going to accomplish in that day? What are you going to finish? What are you going to do? What's holding you back? What's holding Malik back right now? What, okay, get up sooner. Get Read some positive things. Meditate, whatever you want to do. But how do you truly break the belief system of keeping you poor? How do you really do this? What are some strategies? What are some tips? What does he can do? How can you break the state of poverty, whether it's a mindset of poverty or financial poverty? How do you do it? So here's some tips that I want you to take away. Here's some things that will help you break the limiting belief systems and then move towards excellent financial stability. I'm talking a lot about finance because I'm a dentist, but think of finances as whatever you want, whether it's an emotional finance. I don't really care. They all work. First of all, you got to identify what is your limiting beliefs. Write them down. What's holding you back? What truly is holding you back? What do you tell yourself every single day? Write them down in a journal. Write them down as a thoughts and your emotions. Every time you go through a depression, what is it? What, what triggers it? We all have our triggers. What gets you stuck? What gets you dark per se? I always tell people I go dark. There's times I go dark. And there's certain triggers that I identify that are holding me back that I go dark. But you got to push through that. Well, you know, we talked about calluses. The only way to get a callus is if you push through the pain point. You push through the blisters, blisters to form calluses. I'm sure J.D. Garman, my buddy who plays college baseball, he's on this call. I'm sure he had to swing the bat hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times before it never hurt his hands anymore. Yeah, he wore batting gloves because he looks cute in batting gloves, but he probably could swing a bat without batting gloves because he's been doing it so long. So he, he knows it becomes easier. So challenge your belief systems. Challenge every single day. What is it? Identify your belief systems. What is it? Ask yourself whether they are true. Are you looking for evidence to support or contradict him? Why do you believe what you believe? Is it what your parents said? Is it what school systems say? Is it what everyone else says? Or do you truly believe that? If you truly believe that, cool. I'm not trying to change your belief system. But if it's a belief system that's holding you back, you got to always challenge it. And there's always ways to learn from other people to be the best you. And then another thing you can do is how do you reframe how you think? Instead of on focusing what you can't do, what if you focused on what you can do? 
Like, oh, I can't do that. You're right. Maybe you can't do that right now. You're right. I cannot be a dentist overnight. You're absolutely correct. If I'd have told myself in, in dental school, I can't be a dentist. You're right. I would have been correct. But what steps can I take today to get closer to than further away? See, so many times we talk about, am I closer to or further away? What actions or belief systems do you have every single day that is going to get you closer to you when you want to go or further away? And if you can find what those are and you can refrain how you think, that's where you're going to find focus on your strength and abilities. Then that's where you're going to look for the opportunities to grow because you've got to identify. You know, an addict cannot get better until they identify they got a problem. If, 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 if Malik goes in a spiral or a circle every single day, Linda and, and Mariel, if you guys and Christine, if you go through a spiral every single day, is you got to look at it. What is causing that? And then what can I do to think differently? Right? How do you take take action once you know that, though, and then break out of your comfort zone? Get out of your comfort zone. Quit wearing the elastic damn waistband so you don't realize you gained 20 pounds. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to find that resistance. You got to find all those pressure points and you got to push through it. When you're we talk about blisters and calluses, you got to find that thing that hurts so bad. And you got to blow through it and form that callus of your mind. Form that callus of your body. Form that callus in your spirit. Form that callus in your body so that that stuff doesn't even impact you anymore. When you swing the bat 100 times and you don't get a hit, you better say, man, I'm going to swing it the 101st time. When you're a business or entrepreneur and you're trying to get that client to say yes and you hear 10 no's in a row, pick up the phone and be the 11. Don't worry about people telling you no. Worry about when you quit. You got to get out of your comfort zone. Quit being damn safe. You don't grow in safety. You don't grow in a perfect environment. That's not how it works. A tree does not get stronger without wind and resistance and weather. The roots can't get deeper in the ground until they find a path of resistance and pain and pressure and people leaning on them. Man, if it takes me to be on these calls to lean on you, that's what it's going to take. Get out of your comfort zone. And once you know your belief pattern is, you know what's holding you back, you reframe your thinking and you push through that comfort zone, practice self-care, man, take care of you. We have one temple. You know, they say that if you work out, I know it's not a workout thing, but if you just do physical activity, it releases hormones from your, from your body, from your muscles, release hormones and enzymes that triggers your brain to be happy. It's impossible to be anxious and depressed if you're working out. That's why a lot of people, when they struggle, they go to the gym or when they, when they don't, when they keep struggling, they don't move. That's why movement is everything. Practice self-care. You have one temple. You want to know why like, you feel like shit? You might be eating like crap. You want to know why you're not happy? You might not be moving. Like it's that basic. You don't have energy? You're not feeding your fuel body with energy. Quick diet tip. Ready? If you're eating something and you feel like crap after, it's bad for you. Period. You don't need a, a nutritionist to tell you that. But if you're eating something, you get energy. If you're listening to a podcast, you get energy. If you're listening to somebody, you get fired up. If you're and, and, and like I said, motivation is temporary. That's why I said you got to practice self care. You got to know how to do this stuff on your own, because it's really your belief system. It's not my mom's belief system. It's not my wife's belief system. It's not JD's that's going to control, control my life. It's how I think of myself. It's what I think is possible. It's what you think is impossible. So once you do that, you're going to improve your mindset and you're going to find that energy and motivation to go to be the best you. You're going to pursue all your goals. You're going to go after everything you want. And then last but not least, another thing, seek support. Guys, you can't do anything in life without a coach or a mentor. If it's your spouse, J.D., do you want to raise your hand? Is that a raised hand? No, that's my cursor. Sorry, I thought you were raising a hand, bro. Sorry about that. But if you want to be bold and seek support, family, friends, professionals, life coaches, mentors, financial planners, career coaches, therapists, anything you want to help to create and develop a plan, dude, stay on your track. Find somebody. Find somebody. Breaking limiting beliefs takes time and effort, but I promise you it's attainable. I promise you it's possible. You're talking to a guy who broke every belief system that was ever taught to me. Every one of them. And I can tell you everything that I was taught was wrong. Everything you're taught in the educational system, I'm not trying to be this, is wrong. It's not true. Everything you get taught by certain people is just simply not true. You got an experience of yourself. You got to create a belief system that works for you. Maybe your belief system worked for your mom and dad, or maybe it worked for your girlfriend, or maybe it works for this, but it's only you. Your belief system's got to work for you, and that's all that matters. 
By challenging your thoughts and taking action every single day to pursue your goals, you can overcome any thoughts that keep you in the state of poverty mindset, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical. you got to move always towards excellence and financial stability at the end of the day. Right? You got to, you, you have to, you got to have to, right? You got to become the best you. And in conclusion, right, of these limiting belief centers or misunderstandings about how, how do you get money? How do you have the right mindset? These ideas are what lead people to believe that wealth may be attained by hard work, good fortune, and complete sacrifice. When you're aiming to unlock your potential and you're looking to pinpoint the overcoming limiting beliefs of your poverty or your mindset, it can make an immense difference. You have to know what you want to do, where do you want to go, and you got to you got to understand it. It's identify, unlock your power that's within you. Unlock the potential that you have in you. Get, challenge your belief system. Challenge what you've been told. Go ahead and question anything. In a society, more days than now, we can challenge anything we want and it's acceptable. Challenge your own belief system. Does it make sense anymore? Maybe it was a chapter in your life and it made sense before, but now it doesn't. Why can some people make it through and other people can't? It's all about their living and beliefs. They believe they can't do something. Even in dentistry, I always say never speak money in a, in a way that if you, if you have a limiting belief about money, don't talk finances. Sometimes I don't even let my own team talk finances. Why? Because I don't want their limiting belief system put on that. It's not about money to people. It's about value. It's about what they give to you. It's never about money. Guys, so if you want to know, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Write it down in my planner, right? It's tell me. Tell me what you need help on. Tell me Tell me what maybe next talk you want to talk about. If you want to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, feel free. Email me at the info at the dentistco.com. I'll set up a free consultation. We'll talk about everything. I will help you kill and accomplish this thing we call life. You want to accomplish your dreams, man. I am here for you. And, and that's what this is about. And guys, I don't want to take up your whole Tuesday, but tell me, was this call of value to you? Did you guys get anything out of this call? Did you like it? Is this what we're talking about? Are you moving towards that right direction? Just with a thumbs up, man. You keep me motivated, Christine. You keep me motivated, motivated, Mahi. You keep me motivated, Connor. You guys are the reason why I do it. I appreciate all your time. I appreciate all your energy, guys. Much love. I cannot wait to continue. And, and next week, what we're going to talk about is act on the principles of the wealth fellowship. We're going to act on all the principles of the wealth. And I, and I know, I know you're, we're talking about wealth because wealth to me is I, you're like, I'm motivated by money. I'm motivated by becoming the best version of myself, but we are in the same life, whether it's your job, whether it's for your family, whether you're in a nonprofit organization, no matter what it is, is we are in this world to create wealth. And I mean, wealth of more wealth, financially, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally, period. That's what I mean by wealth. But there's principles that we're going to talk about next week. Guys, I love you. Thank you so much for supporting me. Much love. We'll talk soon. Have a blessed day.